What's going on everybody? Welcome back to more positional previews for the New York Giants. Um, today we're going to be going over the defensive tackles and if I can get my notebook real quick. Alright, here we go. Yeah, there's a lot of talent at defensive tackle this year. We haven't had this much talent at defensive tackle and I don't know how long it used to be, you know, Jonathan Hank for a while, it was Jonathan Hankins and Cullen Jenkins. Um, Jonathan Hankins was the only star of um, that defensive tackle group and kind of separated himself from everybody else. And then you had Cullen Jenkins, who was an average defensive tackle who could also get to the pa get to the passer because he also plays defensive end. And um, yeah, and the Giants now have a dress defensive tackle um, in the past drafts and also addressed it in uh, free agency uh un, un you know free agency and unrestricted free agent uh, unrestricted undrafted free agency and um yeah i'm very excited for the the core of defensive tackles we have uh this year and i'll get right into it first we're starting off with our number one defensive tackle right now jonathan hankins um he he uh got injured last year at Tampa Bay, I went to that game, and he got injured, tore his pectoral muscle. I think it was his pec, and um, yeah, he was out for the season right after that. I believe that was also game nine, so he was out for, um, you know, not not necessarily, not necessarily the majority of the season, but a big chunk of it, and we definitely could have used him uh, because we had, you know, scrubs on the team, you know, like Marcus Kuhn and... Um, you know, Montori Hughes is all right, and uh, Louis Nix is all right, but they barely got to play, and, um, you know, some scrubs there that no one even knew, you know, their names, so, um, yeah, we got uh, Jonathan Hankins back, and if you guys didn't know, he is, he wasn't known to be a pass rushing uh, defensive tackle, but in the year of 2014, he did record seven sacks that year, um, and I, the, I even think that came to his surprise. So, um, yeah, I mean, he has a career of seven sacks, and he, he all got it in one year. Um, I'm hoping maybe with, you know, the pass rushers we have on the outside, I could force the quarterback to go inside and get Jonathan Hankins some sacks. But, um, yeah, we'll see um, how uh, Jonathan Hankins comes back, and hopefully he comes back like the player he always was. You know, he was... According to Pro Football Focus, I believe this was the beginning of last year, so before he got hurt, beginning of the season last year, he was the number ten, uh, the number ten run stuffing uh, defensive tackle in the league. Um, and then we transition right over to Damon Harrison, free agent pickup from the Jets, undrafted. Um, he is the Pro Football Focus. Not, I mean, to everyone's eyes, he is the number one defensive uh number one run stuffing defensive tackle in the nfl right now and to pair him up with the number 10 defensive tackle uh run stuffing defensive tackle in the nfl that is such a huge impact and can help the giants in a huge way because in the beginning of the season we did great against the run and that was more so um you know bringing landon collins i mean landon collins was huge in helping stop the run and that's the reason why we did so great but he uh in the beginning of the year but he can't be the only one he's all the way in the back so he needs people up front to make an impact first so when you when you have jonathan hankins and damon harrison to plug up the interior of the defensive line um yeah i i really don't think you know maybe we'll give up a hundred yard run here or there it's gonna happen i'm not saying it's never gonna happen that we're gonna allow only like 70 yards a game but i do see us doing a way better job at stopping the run than previous years so um yeah with the tandem of jonathan hankins and damon harrison i really think that's gonna be um one of the top run stuffing defenders in the nfl and yes i'm going as big as saying that and i'm really confident in saying that so we move on um to some some good talent at defense tackle some good depth um rotational players that we can uh, throw in we move on to jay bromley a third round pick in 2013 um he has shown some flashes he is good at stopping the run um 
He also can get a little pressure on the quarterback. He he is I think he has yet to record a sack. He has a sack in the preseason, but you know we never count that. But um, yeah, he he's not really much of a you know a you know attack the passer kind of uh, defensive tackle as you know is not expected of you, but it can be a plus. So um, Jay Bromley, he's gonna come back. Is probably gonna be. Uh, competing for a spot with other defensive tackles, but he may have, he may be penciled in as a number three rotational defensive tackle as of right now because he has probably the most experience on this uh, defensive tackle core besides uh, the two I just mentioned before. Um, so we move on to um, Louis Nix the third. Now this guy coming out. Coming into the draft in the 2014 draft, I believe, he was almost projected as a, well, he was for the uh, most part of the mock draft period. He was projected to be a first round pick, a late first round pick, but he ended up getting taken, I believe, in the third round by the Houston Texans. Um, he was later released, but I don't know, I don't know how, uh, maybe, you know, lack of production could be a huge uh, part of that. But um, the Giants picked him up. He he played a decent amount. I mean, he barely played. He barely got any time. I was excited to see what he was going to do last year, but he barely got any playing time. Um, but from what I could tell, he is a run stuffer up the middle. Um, he lacks in speed, only ran about a 5-4 in the 40-yard dash, which, I mean, you don't really pay attention much to the 40-yard dash when it comes to defensive tackles. Not a lot, but it is something to go off from, that he is not the fastest player in the world. And um, so when you, you know, you see all that together and he's not a um, a pass attacking, you know, defensive tackle, he's not going to get to the, get in the quarterback's face. But he does have the ability and he has shown this ability of batting down passes. That's something he was uh, most famous for in his collegiate career was batting down passes because he was able to predict where the quarterback was throwing and when to put his hands up. And so that can be a useful thing for us. Maybe he, that translate, translates into the NFL. I haven't seen him done it, do it with us, but yet he barely got any playing time. So uh, Louis Nix is going to be competing with um, Jay Bromley. Um, he he is a big body and it can um, stop the run. So we'll see what he, what he does with that. Uh, moving on to uh, Melvin Lewis. Now, this guy hasn't really done much in his collegiate career. Um, he was he was uh, known to just be um, not known. I mean, everyone was telling him that he deserved a a chance at being an undrafted rookie, but nobody was really saying he had a shot of making a roster. Um, and I really can couldn't find any tape on him. He was injured for a majority of a year. He did. Um, he did show some stuff, um, but I mean, I didn't see anything on him, so I really don't know what to say about that. Um, so he'll be competing for a spot. Maybe we'll see him in the preseason. I'll, I'll definitely see how he does, but um, I really don't know what to say from that. But um, Montori Hughes, um, we take we took him off the. Uh, I think we signed him. As a free agent, he was drafted by the Colts in the fifth round, but I think we signed him as a free agent at the, at the time. Then we put him at the practice squad. Then he got activated to the active roster in, I believe, November. So um, he, too, did not get as much playing time as I would have hoped. But um, he is a power defensive tackle. This guy can bull rush so crazily. But the only downside I have while, while I was watching his tape um, the only downside I had, he, I mean, he's a huge guy. I mean, guys, if you just look at him, he just looks like just intimidating. But he uses so much power to bull rush the offensive lineman that he also oftentimes creates a hole for the running back or a dual threat quarterback that sees that hole. I mean, um, so while everybody's offensive lineman is right here, he kind of moves the off another, you know, his offensive lineman back here, and that creates a huge gap for a running back or a quarterback, and sometimes he, he uses his power too much as um, as a disadvantage as as opposed to a advantage. So um, I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do as a power nose tackle. Um, a lot of nose tackles the Giants have. We, um, 
usually, you know, would just get a regular defense attack. But we're, we're really starting to get these big body nose tackles. And I'm excited to see what we're going to do with that. I'm excited to see what Spags is um, trying to do with that. So, um, moving on to my favorite um, uns unsung hero uh, defensive tackle. One that I really think can make this roster. And that's why I saved him for last is Greg Milhouse Jr. Now... When we picked him up, I didn't know anything about him, mind you. I um, would, you know, watch the daily uh, Big Blue Kickoff Live um, podcast that the Giants media have. And, um, you know, they say that Greg Milhouse Jr. is a dark horse to make this roster and that he was a great uh, defensive tackle coming into this draft, so on and so forth. So I read up on him. I did. I watched... I was able to watch a decent amount of tape on him um, because he was projected to go in the draft in about the fifth or sixth round. You can you can get some good talent in the fifth or sixth round, guys. We're talking like I mean, Paul Perkins was taken in the fifth round. He was supposed to go in the third, but still, I mean, you 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 know, there's a lot of players you could have taken in taken the fifth round, and to be projected to go in the fifth or sixth round shows that you know. Uh, a lot of people were intrigued by his talent, but there were some flaws to his game. You know, that's why he was a fifth or sixth round prospect. But you look at his combine, he didn't score too high on the combine, uh, but he did have a 4-9-40. Um, if you just look at the way he plays and look at the way um, he is in his physical stature, I'm not saying this at all as a comparison to him, but I'm going to compare him to Aaron Donald just by physical stature, guys. I'm not saying his play is just like Aaron Donald. I'm not saying that at all, but bear with me. If you guys watch his tape, if you guys looked at him standing, not, not him playing, if you looked at him standing, you could have sworn that was Aaron Donald. Uh, the way he moves around, not his play, the way he moves around, um was similar to Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald, I brought up his measurement. Um, Greg Milhouse Jr. is 6'1", 295. Uh, Aaron Donald is 6'1", 285. So he's only 10 pounds, uh, 10 pounds heavier than Aaron Donald. And um, not only is he a great run stuffer, Greg Milhouse is, but he is also a great pass rusher. He had five sacks last season. And that's something that the Giants could use. I mean, on a, you know, on a third and long play or something like that, and the Giants need a better pass rush with Olivier Vernon and JPP coming off. And then you got Jonathan Hankins, who also has an ability to pass rush with Greg Milhouse Jr. on third down. I think that's a, that's a good uh, combination there for the Giants, and I think we could use him. So I think we should use him as our fifth de defensive tackle. And, um, yeah, with his, you know, combination of power and, and athleticism, this guy could bull rush and he could hit a, a good spin move, man. I mean, when he gets passed into the open backfield and tackles the running back, it's just, it's fast and easy. I mean, he takes no time in doing it. He, he, it's quick and easy, you know. So, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. Um, so, yeah, if I had to make my own depth chart, um, this would mean that the Giants would have 10 defensive linemen. Um, will that happen? Maybe. I hope so. I hope they keep def uh, 10 defensive linemen. We can't keep everybody, but um, yeah, sometimes we keep 9, sometimes we keep 10, so we'll see how that plays out um, when the 90-man uh, roster is announced and then the 53 and so on, 75 and 53. So um, yeah, so here's my depth chart. We've got Jonathan Hankins. We've got Damon Harrison. Um, we've got Jay Bromley. Now, I had some really hard choices here between Montori Hughes or Louis Nix, and I chose um, Louis Nix. So, um, yeah, we're going to go with Louis Nix. Then, um, so one, two, three, four. And then our fifth one, I have Greg Milhouse Jr. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I really think Greg Milhouse Jr. can be a force in the NFL. Uh, we'll see as him being a, you know, a starting talent. I mean, maybe. Um, I really don't see why he can't be a starting talent defensive tackle. 
but um, we'll see how it plays out. Let me know what you guys think. I'll be doing um, linebackers pretty soon. I don't know, maybe two days from now, uh, maybe Friday, something like that. So, yeah, two days from now, Friday. So, we'll see. But that's all I got for today, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video.